Any health-related information on the following show provides general information only. Content presented on any show by any host or guest should not be substituted for a doctor's advice. Always consult your physician before beginning any new diet, exercise, or treatment program. Welcome to Accelerated Health Radio and TV. I'm your host, Sarah Banta. I'm a health coach, natural supplement expert, and a busy mom of three teenagers. I believe that your body does want to and is capable of rebuilding and healing itself regardless of what chronic disease you may have. And I'm here for you to answer your questions, bring you innovative and cutting edge technologies and health solutions to empower you and your ability to reach your optimal state of health. Today, so excited, my guest will be talking about relationships with yourself and others and how your relationships affect your overall mental and physical health. And I know more than anyone that you really need that strong physical foundation to work on your mental, spiritual, and relationship growth. Whether it's overcoming anxiety and depression, losing weight, or detoxing the body in the right way, and even increasing that level of frequency or vibration in life, you need that strong physical foundation in order to gain the willpower to make bigger changes in life. If you're new to following me, I do specialize in helping you get there. You can find my health articles, my cutting edge natural supplements, devices, and protocols at acceleratedhealthproducts.com. I dive into an array of health conditions and their causes and symptoms and how to address them naturally. I have spent thousands of dollars and hours of my time biohacking different supplements, technologies, and diets that don't work so that you don't have to. If you have any health issues you need help with, so you can email me directly through the, through the website or comment below. I personally read every one. Accelerated Health Products is the sponsor of the show, so as you support my website, I'm able to bring you more cutting edge content and guests to the show. Like I mentioned, today we will be diving into optimizing your relationships and how these relationships will lead to liver, living at a higher level of frequency or vibration. So. I first wanted to talk about my monthly free group coaching that comes with the Accelerated Ascent Diet Cleanse. It has blown me away, the changes I've seen in these people that are going through the cleanse. First of all, they think they're joining just to get rid of a little pain, maybe lose some weight, maybe hoping to put off a surgery that they have to have. I can't tell you. We have not had anyone have to go through the surgery that they're they're planning on doing. I had one client last week tell me that his insulin um, dosage has been cut in half in five weeks and he was having kidney issues, liver issues. His heart doctor was scared of where his health was going. It was not looking good and things have turned around. The, it's the most comprehensive cleanse and I have the group do and what they have reported that easy fat loss for the stubborn pounds that don't come off and they tried for 10, 20 years. The hormonal balance is back. Increased and in sustained energy for physical endurance, for working out, for just life. Increased mental focus. The brain fog goes away. Better bowel movements, which is a key to good health. Decreased appetite and the ability to intermittent fast for up to 22 hours. Even some people were doing it for three days. Clearer skin and wider eyes, better sleep, of course, less moodiness, which of course benefits everybody as we're going to talk with our guests, even your the people you're living with, and improved cellular health, meaning how the toxins are able to come out of the cells and the nutrients to get in the cells. You know, your vitamins do no good if your cells don't accept it and they're not clean to accept it. So that's really important. And then at the end of the cleanse, you actually flush out gallstones and liver stones out of the body in the toilet safely, hundreds to thousands of them. And then when you see them, you'll say to yourself, oh my gosh, how did my liver even process 
fat and increased thyroid and metabolism when all of those stones that look like green peas are sitting in the liver, not doing anything. It's unbelievable. And everyone learns a deeper understanding of how to naturally heal the body. I teach you how to really get in tune with your own health and to become your own doctor, which is so important now more than ever as it's Number one, we don't know who we're trusting anymore. And number two, it's hard to go to the doctor and it's not easy. So a lot of people are able to get off their medications. I am not a doctor. That is something you do with your doctor, but you're able to do so once you start healing your body. So the difference between me and any other group coaching is I provide the most cutting edge frequency enhanced supplements that work synergistically with each other and the body doesn't experience those flu-like symptoms, you feel great late, uh, day one. So there's not that detox flu symptoms and you get your insulin levels um, lower and the blood sugar lower and you feel just constant, constant, constant. The pain goes away and I teach you how to do it. If you're interested, leave a comment below and I will contact contact you and find out if it's right for you. So today, now to the good stuff. Good stuff. Dr. Gary Salyer is a transform transformational relationship mentor for the last dec decade. He's been in private practice offering singles and couples heart-centered transformation so they can rewrite the rules for love in their brains and create a love that lasts. He's the author of the groundbreaking book, Safe to Love Again, How to Release the Pain of Past Relationships and Create the Love You Deserve. Welcome, Gary. How are you this morning? I'm doing well, Sarah. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm so excited to have you on. As I mentioned before we got on, there is this misnomer that health is all about physical and mental health, and it goes way beyond that spiritual relationship. And they're all intertwined. When your physical health goes down, your relationships go down. Um, just a few weeks ago, I had Drew Manning, the fit to fat to fit guy on, yeah. on the show. And literally during his journey, as he was gaining 60 pounds, his relationships fell apart. And he owns it. He says, I'm, I'm moody. My daughters don't want to be around me. He went through a horrible breakup and all of these things because your physical foundation is so important to your relationships as well. Um, and so that's why I'm really excited to come on and talk to you about relationships in general. Well, thank you. And, and it's true. I mean, uh, relationships and how we're wired for love or <clears throat> are not, as it sometimes is has an enormous effect on our health, not only our healthy relationships, but our health inside of us too. So there's, there's a lot of research on that. Well, let's start before we dive into all the relationship goodies. Um, let's start ab about your journey and what brought you here to doing this work. You know, <clears throat> it started out a long time ago, growing up in an alcoholic family, a lot of dysfunction. Um, and I remember being at this drunken party and noticing how mean my my uncles were typically to my aunts, <laughs> right? And then how mean they would get back. And then I remember just thinking, why can't adults love each other more? Yeah. You know, why can't they just be nice? Uh, so when I went to college, I decided I wasn't going to be divorced or mean like that. So I, I had a I was look, looking at two degrees to make sure I would never be divorced like so many in my family. And then my senior year, uh, I was given a personality test. And at the end of this, this the professor said, oh, by the way, uh, you have a 90% chance of having a divorce. <laughs> so, <laughs> Like bombs going off. So I literally won a fifth year of college. I delayed graduation, a degree in marriage and family. So imagine what it was like 12 years later when my first wife says, I want a divorce. I mean, I thought I'd done everything. So after seven years of therapy, uh, you know, I, I go into a second marriage and within months it starts unraveling. I'm going, how is this happening? I don't get it. I've done more therapy than you can shake a stick at, right? And I've done these degrees and I've worked hard. And at some point in time, I began to realize that I, you know, therapy had done me a lot of good, but I was managing the pain, not transforming it, not 
become my patterns were still essentially the same, just cleaned up a bit. <clears throat> and that was when I decided, hey, nobody should work this hard to, to have a lasting love and to have these results. So that's when I just devoted the rest of my life. I said to myself one day, if they can't crack the code, I will. And that's kind of where the work came. That's and that's how I wrote the book and just asking the question, <clears throat> what 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 will reshape them? I don't know many people that don't have some dysfunctional upbringing or some issue with a mom or a dad or something from childhood that has broken them. But that does not give you the right to be a victim all your life either. So with that, let's talk about what how does how do the you talk about the four feelings of secure love and where yeah. does that come from when we're when we are children and I studied psychology in college and I remember the importance of the attachment that that we had to our parents and when that was not secure the damage that it was doing was was long lasting it, it was I mean when you talk about the universe giving you the same experience over over and over i call that groundhog day um, and it's related to these four feelings <clears throat> i call them reference feelings for love and originally you know attachment is, is a theory it's just the science of how your brain gets wired to love and be loved uh, and they typically focus on three categorizations there's a fourth that gets more into mental illness but the three that most people with normal middle class craziness have like you and i <laughs> are secure anxious and avoidant. <clears throat> but I ask the question, you know, well, a lot of times they describe it, but they don't tell you if you're anxious or avoidant. And anxious is like the great fear. When does love go away? Oh my God, why didn't you text me? Or in the avoidant is like their worst fear is being depended on or depending on somebody. Their worst fear is when does love stay? <clears throat> then the secure are wired for long lasting relationships. They're comfortable giving love. But they don't, the, a lot of attachment theory didn't say, how do you reclaim a secure love style if you got one of the others? And I asked the question, so what tells a secure child to be loved, that they're loved? And we know that from the from a, 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 something called the strange experiment, that from the time a child is a year to a year and a half old, Sarah, they have a love style that will track the rest of their lives without barring intervention. <clears throat> now, if you've heard of limiting beliefs and stories and identity, that's not online yet. That doesn't come online until the prefrontal cortex gets fully maturated. It's called myelinated at about three. So it's none of those things like limiting beliefs and stories. It's these, the only thing up and running is anybody who has ever been around a one-year-old is feelings. <coughs> they barely have words. How can they write up a story about it, right? How can they have a belief? And these four feelings, if you track them, are welcomed with joy, Worthy and nourished to have your needs met. Welcome with joy is, is it's good to be here in my body. It feels the, the world is my safe, warm, cozy feeling. And you, you expect life and people to greet you with, good morning, Sarah. You know, when the little bit is, it happens when a little baby is getting, oh, there's this little Susie. So glad you're here, right? Worthy is that right to reach out for your needs, that it feels good to reach out for your needs. <coughs> and to receive. And then there's a feeling of cherished and protected, where you get to be a me who explores your universe. You know how children in the light want to go out of their room and play, but they want you there. If you leave, then, you know, they cry. <coughs> That's They want to be a me in a we, to be seen, to be cherished and protected. And uh, it's not a me or we, it's a me in a we. Mm -hmm. And then there's empowered with choice, where it's okay to create my own experience. If I want to play, if I'm a girl and I want to play with G.I. Joe, that's cool. <laughs> you know, if you know, whatever it is, it's and you get to be good with good and bad, strong and weak, and then a right to have a voice. If you feel welcomed and worthy and cherished and empowered, that child feels lovable. And it just so happens that's our natural GPS for love. If you're an adult, those four feelings are still telling you whether you feel loved or not. And that's the key is to get in touch with your natural GPS. Now, where Groundhog Day comes in, what if you were given another reference feeling, say unwelcome or unworthy or uncherished or disempowered? 
Your brain will use those as a reference feeling to seek out, create, and maintain relationships. So your brain says, oh, I'm unworthy. I only have a right to feel unworthy, so I'll find someone who's a taker. Oh, mm -hmm. I, I only have, I feel disempowered. I only have a right to feel disempowered. I don't have a right to create my experience. So I'll find someone who's a dominator or I'll lose myself in a relationship. <clears throat> this is how we get the groundhog experience. And of course, the secure ones are also a groundhog experience, except on the positive side. So the key is to go back and to swap out those old feelings of unworthy, unworthy, you know, unwelcome, uncherished and disempowered for the good ones. And when we and when we swap them out, then our our our, our attachment systems naturally pick better because we're using welcomed and worthy and cherished and empowered. And that's the key to, to get in touch. How am I feeling in this relationship? And and what's the feeling that's really driving the bus? And then working with that from an early age. So so uh, there's, uh, a little, there's a little uh, echo uh, echo there. Um, um, but but I I let me turn down my volume. I don't know if that's any better. There we go. Um, so if someone actually is secure as a child and there's no issues in those first couple of years, but then they experience something maybe in their teenage years. We all know that girls and not so much boys, but girls are mean, right? So they get, get have conflict in their teenage years. Can that permanently disrupt their relationship patterns? It, well, permanently is a word I wouldn't because I think this, you know, but yes, later experience does count. These rights that I, these feelings create what I call rights. You have a right for certain experiences, like a welcome gives you a right to exist and worthy gives you a right to reach out for your needs, right? So it is true that later experience can affect. Now it's be, it's better if you have an early set of good feelings because it's you have a you have a natural way home. But yes, I have had clients who. You know, one client had a perfectly wonderful, secure relationship, but she was abducted at 13. Um, mm -hmm. And that changed her to anxious. How else could it be? Or I've even heard of, of girl bullies doing it, you know, later on. And <clears throat> yes, but usually um, the secure feelings can help mitigate that. But yes, later experience can. Uh, and sometimes it can be a later uh you know, relationship or a first marriage that can do it. But generally speaking, these rights and these feelings are set up early. And for most of the time, it, there's usually, uh, if something happened in early on, earlier relationship, it often tracks back, but not always. We are adaptable creatures. Right. I mean, it just makes so much sense. And when you're anxious or you are avoidant, um, you're going to pick the partner that fits that mold. And then it's just a vicious cycle and a self-fulfilling prophecy, essentially. Correct? Exactly. I mean, you can be, if you put a pretty, uh, a secure person in a situation where say someone is very avoidant and not very attuned and is very mean, they can become situationally avoidant. That's appropriate. <laughs> I mean, right. how many right. times have you ever wanted to avoid someone that was a jerk? Right. That's, that's situational avoidance. That's a that's a that's a healthy thing. There's some part saying I I, I don't deserve to be treated undeserving. <laughs> yeah, and so, the so, thing is, is all this affects your health. It really does. You know. Well, I I talk a lot about how stress. Obviously, if you're in an anxious state of mind or you're avoiding relationships, that's increasing your cortisol and your stress hormones, which then is do, wreaking havoc on your physical and your mental health as well. So it, this is where it's all intertwined and you need to calm down the brain. You need to calm down or fix the relationships, but you also need that strong physical foundation to be strong enough and to have a foundation where you can actually learn to feel worthy. You know, there's kind of this this foundation, like the pyramid, right? You you need that strong physical foundation in order to build on the feelings of feeling worthy. You know, early on the show, uh, I was listening to you talking about your health products, and it's it's not just the vitamins; it's how well your absorbs your your cells absorb them. Mm -hmm. So now that we're talking about worthy, let me tell you about uh, a real client that came in to me. 
when she first came to me, she was saying, or the presenting problem was, why in the world do I keep finding these married men to date? I am looking out for them. And she goes, I swear, it feels like the part of me that picks men has an in for me because I swear to God, I've done my research and then suddenly they're gone all weekend. I'm thinking, this looks like the old pattern, you know. Now, and, uh, and then sure enough, they're married. And she goes, I don't get it. I'm looking out for it. Why do I only deserve, you know, uh, married men? It turns out that early on in life, she was really given the, the message of, un, of unworthy, right? Unworthy. Uh, so a mom that would always say when she asked her son, oh, honey, it's not always about you, right? And a father that at age seven, you know, uh, she, after a divorce from, after they divorced, pulled out a wad of money when she just asked for an ice cream cone on a, on a visit and said, this is what you cost me every month. A lot of feeling of I'm unworthy. When we, now the funny thing was when we swapped out that feeling, that's doing some pretty deep work where she could feel it, not just saying, oh, I'm worthy, doing a, a vision board, but to feel it in her guts and in her body. Um, she began, suddenly she stopped picking these married guys. But something else happened beside, underneath this. Mm -hmm. Originally, she told me that she had struggled with anemia her entire life, and she was in her 40s. <clears throat> and that it just defied medical science, no matter how many mega vitamins they gave her, that just, it would always come back in a couple of months. And she had just resigned herself that I'm always gonna be on these supplements or these medications. And then, after about after we really did a lot of this work, about three months later, she goes, something really odd has happened. She goes, I don't need my medications. I'm no longer anemic. Now, the part of her that said, I can't take what she said, I have to pay for everything. I can't take. That whole belief, I'm unworthy and I can't, I have to give, 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 right? I have, but I can't take, had worked itself into a cellular manifestation called anemia. Her, and when she got the right and the feeling unworthy, it seeped down into her body and then suddenly her body goes, hmm, I guess I can start taking in these nutrients too. There's always these rights that I talk about in my book, Safe to Love Again. They always have a physical manifestation in musculature and often the, the very physiology of our bodies. Um, we are not in skull, we are embodied <laughs> creatures. Yes. And that's literally uh, one of the ways uh, it often affects health and people don't even know how their attachment, their love styles, as I call it, are affecting them in terms of health and other areas of life. Gosh, I've had the chills right now because you're speaking my language. And number one, I want to talk about, you know, the, that is something that my groups are really discover three, four weeks in where they say, I can't believe it. These ailments that have nothing to do with what I'm eating are going away. I'm less anxious. My relationship with my husband's improving. I'm feeling strong enough to say no to that toxic friend that is just killing, you know, stripping away my, my health and my um, energy. And when we go through the cleanse, the end part is to do a liver flush. Well, people don't realize that your liver is where you hold your anger and your frustration. So during the prep part, you might feel these old um, feelings that kind of get stirred up again, right from your past. Mm -hmm. But then once you do the flush, they all go away. And it's not just the liver stones that go out. But it's the anger and the frustration and some of these other health issues that go away. And your kidneys are where you hold your fear. So during COVID and all that's going on right now, there's a lot of people with UTIs and kidney issues that are coming to me right now. And it's no coincidence. So it's just very interesting how the body does hold those emotions. And when you're detoxing or even when you're losing weight, fat cells hold your emotions. So if you lose weight, though you're lose, you're actually reliving some of that stuff. And I also have a lot of clients that are obese, where that protection, that extra fat, is protection to guard their feelings and emotions. And it's not just a physical manifestation; it's it's or a physical, it's a physical manifestation of their emotions. And all of a sudden, they. 
they work on their emotional issues and the physical issues go away or vice versa. It's, it's so intertwined. And I love that you touched on that. Um, I want, if you think, if you think about it, if, if you think about it, all these, I call them reference feelings cause all feelings are motivational states. And if feelings don't have words, but if they had words, they either would say yes to an experience or no. So if you are holding in at a cellular level, feelings of frustration and toxicity, those feelings are going to act like a reference to say yes to a certain experience. And it's got to resonate back. So if you're in a toxic relationship, it makes sense that some part is holding something at a cellular level that's containing reference feelings for toxicity. So you choose those more naturally. And you're not even aware that how these subtle feelings are literally motivational states. They're permission slips. And they either say yes or no. The problem is with toxicity is it says yes to more toxicity. Yeah. That's, yeah. A, that's a great insight. Absolutely. Well, okay. So here we are. We are anxious or avoiding or we've got some issues with our love patterns. How do you retrain your brain so that you can gain that secure love style so, so that you can attract the positive relationships. You know, I, I call it's the word I, I would rather use is rewire. Retrain sounds like, you know, you're just going to retrain. Uh, now, at some point in time, usually a lot of attachment stuff goes back to our love issues go back to something early, an early imprint that said uh, you couldn't have a certain experience, right? It's not cool to reach out for my needs, or I have to do it all by myself, or I better not, I have to only be good with my 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 strong, uh, my weak side, and I can't have my strength or one or the other, or I better not raise my voice and speak what I, what I want. Those feelings, if we get uh, one of those negative feelings of unwelcomed, unworthy, the brain, these rights are taken off the shelf because it's not safe to have it. Whatever you're at, if you're anxious or avoidant, <coughs> your brain took the best deal available. Mm -hmm. It's it, it never, no brain gets up in the morning and says, gosh, how can I screw with my master today? It doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. At some point in time, that was the best deal available. I still remember, I went to a party in Marin a few years ago and there was a growth community of about 40 people there. And I was invited and about 20 of them had read uh, an early book on a town called Attached. And uh, and it doesn't do much to say how you get back home to your heart. It just says you're anxious, void, and, or secure and gives kind of a description. And I got this from about 15 people, but the one guy said it most poignantly. He said, I stopped reading about halfway through because I realized I was avoiding it. And it felt like I had a huge uh, sign over my head that said, screwed. Now, no one told him that. What's the flavor of screwed that you got? At one point in time, screwed was the best deal available for that for that little one. You know, you know what I tell people for me is, you know, uh, I always had the feeling that I had to do it by myself. I, you know, I, I didn't get a lot of right to, I had more right to separate than to belong. So being in a we didn't feel very good. Now, if you know that at four, I stepped on some bees. And I walked into the house and all of my aunts and uncles and my mother were passed out unconscious on the, mm. on the couch. And some part of me said, looking for people is no good. How do I, you know, what, how do I do this myself? And then I start thinking, oh my God, they put that, that, that stuff that's pink all over you. And then they put that clear stuff, which was Bactine. And then they put ice <laughs> and I had to, and I started, and there's a little four-year-old thinking, okay, where's the, where does the, where's the Bactine? Where's the methylate, right? No wonder I got to the place that creating you know, things by myself was good. Now, did that work out so good in my first marriage? No. But at one time, it was the best deal available. Now, that's not so cherished, is it? I got the feeling of uncherished and unprotected. So if you're uncherished and unprotected, doing it by yourself, pretty good deal. But... Yeah, it's given you. It's going back, and it's it's hard to tell you know what the what the word is, but you have to go back and find the exact flavor of safety. Your brain was seeking when it took 
a right or an experience off the menu, so to speak. When I when I felt I could not depend on a we, or when you cannot reach out for your needs, or when you cannot raise your voice, or you cannot share experience, or you get to lose yourself. At some point in time, you have to go and find the exact flavor of safety. And then to, to help your brain feel safe again with that feeling of welcomed and worthy and cherished and empowered. It's why the book is called Safe to Love Again, not guilt tripped, not, not exhorted. <laughs> you know, it's not coached, it's safe. And if we can find that flavor of safety and let and help that feel that brain feel it's safe to have that feeling again, your brain will naturally take a better deal. And then it's cause, and then when you start feeling worthy at your core, worthy people don't choose takers. Mm -hmm. you know, disempowered people don't find dominators or con continually lose themselves. Cherished people know they have a right to be in a really good supportive we, where you have a home port in someone else's heart. You know, and it's going back and restoring these feelings. And a lot of coaching and even therapy is based on kind of, you know, more logically dealing with things. And logic ain't running the show. <laughs> it's gotcha. these feelings. Yeah. You know, as you're talking, I don't know why we're still in the echo. Here, I'm sorry about that. Okay, so as you're talking, my brain's calming down because you're you're just getting me in that mode of really really thinking through the the relationships i have that calm me down and how i've chosen my friends over the years and how in the past i've had friends or relationships that don't calm my brain down so i want to come back we're going to take a short commercial break and talk about how important it is to have that calm brain and how it helps with our relationships. So we'll be right back after a short commercial break with Dr. Gary Salyer. Back to Accelerated Health Radio and TV. We're here with Dr. Gary Salyer. Gary, so we we left off talking about um, a calm brain. First of all, mm -hmm. let's talk about what does that mean and why is that so important in our relationships? Well, a calm brain is what I call a green brain, <laughs> you know, versus a red brain versus a danger brain. And a calm brain is where you basically you are feeling safe enough. And when your brain feels safe, then it can, it, it's got a social engagement system, right? Uh, Stephen Porges calls it. And it's, and it's okay to seek out relationships. Whenever you don't feel safe, something happens to that. And, you know, our relationships always suffer, you know, and floods us with, you know, cortisol and things like that. Now, this may be of some importance, you know, like in couples research, you know, there are four things that can really raise your cortisol levels and most couples engage in it. The four horsemen, according to John Gottman, are, you know, criticism, defensiveness, contempt, mm. and stonewalling, right? Now, every couple, even secure couples, will do criticism and defensiveness. It's kind of human nature. Now, but contempt is different than criticism. Contempt is the acid rain for a relationship. It's where you are making it about their character from an exalted place. And it's like snarkiness. It's put downs. Oh, you know, hello. You know, thank you for not paying the uh, the mortgage, Mr. Financial Wizardry. Right. Um, and it's, it's that put down. It's sarcastic. Now, what we know 
Now, this is what's really interesting for health, is that whenever a partner in an intimate relationship experiences contempt from their partner, that the body turns off their T cells for the next five hours. Hmm. Their body has, is now getting the gateway open for diseases and specifically cancer. This is why women in a contemptuous relationship are nine times more at risk. I have to get another one up there. Nine times more at risk for breast cancer. And, and everybody is in the next four years is has more, but women especially. I mean, uh, literally, contempt not only is the acid rain that predicts uh, the breakup of a relationship within 6.8 years at 94%, it's got some wicked <laughs> health issues attached to it. Oh. And when relationships break down and you start getting into that contemptuous fear, you're opening your body up to all sorts of things, breast cancer, all sorts of diseases. We know that things like um, um, psoriasis are, you know, are actually related to anxious attachment you know um you know you can get skin stuff from uh having an anxious attachment so it's really important to have a calm brain and be with people there's a myth out there sarah that we we self-regulate <clears throat> and the fact of the matter is is we don't so much self-regulate as we co-regulate Mm -hmm. The masters of relationships not only know how to calm themselves when they're upset, they know how to calm their beloved. Mm -hmm. We need each other. We learn it early. And there's never really a day that we're not being co-regulated. You know, we, we call up friends. What happens when a bad day? Call up a friend. We need someone to co-regulate you. And if a friend isn't uh, and an intimate partner doesn't know how to calm you, that's not a good relationship. And I see it all the time dealing with couples. They, they get upset and they are off to the races, spiraling into, into, from, uh, you know, into red brain. And, and then that turns off their prefrontal cortex. So now they're, they're, their empathy centers are offline and now nothing good happens in the relationship. It's so important to realize, take that breath. Is your body feeling safe? Can it, or do you feel that gnawing feeling in your gut, <laughs> you know, or in your chest or in your chest, you know, do you, are you able to, to relax and breathe with each other? Do you feel comfortable? You know, that's part of a right to exist is to know that you can calmly sit and discuss things. So it's hugely important to have a, a green brain, you know, uh, as I call it. And, and I thank you that you, you said talking was was calming you. It, that's that's the goal. I I try to. Uh, no one's ever perfect at it, a hundred percent. But I always try to live in a certain presence of groundedness that people feel calm around me. Do I get there a hundred percent of the time? Not in this life. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a goal. You know? Right. Right. <laughs> well, it's but it's. I 100% agree. And I want to talk. Okay, so now we've got the calm brain, right? And mm -hmm. we are talking about couples with their conflicts. So how can you give us some practical tips on how to manage conflicts within a relationship, especially and we can talk about what everyone's going through right now. I mean, I mentioned before the the life of COVID and living in underneath a household where everyone's home and maybe the husband's gone or not gone, but the kids are home zooming and we're on top of each other. And what I what I personally experience and my kids are great. I love my kids to death and they're good kids that are doing what they're supposed to be doing. But I'm supposed to have the house to myself from eight to three. And so yeah. when I just the noise distractions of someone in the kitchen or, you know, all of a sudden someone says, Mom, I need this or Mom, what about this? It's that, oh, that jump so that I'm kind of in that fight or flight mode up and down throughout the day, whereas I'm trying to calm my brain. And yeah. it's, it's, it's a, it's hard. It is definitely hard. So how do we take care of that and 
manage conflicts that are obviously more than normal during this period. And then we're now opening up. So things are changing again and we're having to navigate this world that we've never navigated before. Well, there's a ton of questions in there, right. Sarah. And they're all great ones. <laughs> First off, what quarantine did, and I, and I saw it when it first came out. My son called me when Gavin Newsom, you know, shut everything down. And he calls me, you know, he's an adult, and he says, so what's it like being grounded, Dad? <laughs> you know? And I could see the 12-year-old was, was having fun to sit with this, you know, because there was an age there where I had to ground him a few times. But I thought about it. I thought, you know, what uh, the center of every couple is what I call right to separate and belong. It's it comes from the feeling of cherished and protected. It's where you get to go out and separate and have your you know your dreams and your goals and you you pursue your big life, but you can come back to a we. So there you are up on the high wire act of the of the, you know of your aspirations. But there's a safety net below you. COVID split that right down the middle. For couples, it was all right to belong and no right to separate. Talk about a cauldron of pressure, right? It's not an accident that uh, I had 10 couples come to me last year, five of them with 30 plus years in the bank. Mm -hmm. They had been using distractions for 30 years to manage that that residual thing. And now when you're underneath each feet, each other's feet, oh my God, uh, the pressure cooker was on. For singles, it was the exact opposite. All right to separate, no right to belong. They'll never, how do I even date? You know, how, how, how do you kiss someone on a first date if you're afraid you're gonna die? But for couples, there was this constant, you are looking at each other's those issues and there's the fact that there were just too many bids for attention. You know, the, the heart and soul of all relationship is, is what's called the bid for attention and getting a timely attuned response back. Most of the time, we know that good couples respond to each other about 85% of the time. They will respond to a bid. Whereas the uh, unsuccessful couples, somebody makes a bid for attention, honey, uh, you know, um, can you pass me the salt or anything like that? You know, um, they respond about 33% of the time. Mm -hmm. So if you're there in COVID, you're getting inundated. There's no right to be separate, to be able to pull your, you know, to do your, your career, right? I saw this one COVID uh, uh, comic that had the mom working at a desk, before, says working at home during COVID, and all three kids were, were wrapped in tape on the floor behind her, and she was on a Zoom. <laughs> you know? I mean, it was a little COVID humor, but you know, I'm sure the moms actually thought about that. Well, you're not used to those, you know, used to be when they're at school, you have a bid-free zone, right? Right. Not any longer, because kids don't, especially if they're four or five, they don't know that they're not supposed to come into that Zoom meeting. So now, so the key thing that I told couples uh, was you have to consciously create a right to separate. That means you sit down. First off, you make every you make sure that every feeling is okay. There's going to be all sorts of feelings landing, and you're the air traffic controller. <laughs> You've got to tell those things where to land, and you have to make sure that if somebody is freaking out, only one of you freaks out at a time. So mm -hmm. someone's got to hold space for the other. It's okay to freak out. Oh my God, I'm going to lose my career. I'm going to lose my job. We're going to lose our mortgage. Or, you know. Us, who's going to get sick? All that stuff. You you just have a contract. Okay, it's my. I need to freak out, honey. Right, and then you have to consciously say, how you know when is a time and where is time. What are the signals for no bids? So for an hour, you get to sit by yourself, and if you're sitting in that chair, that means no bid. That means you don't go out and ask them where things are at, or you have times. You have to consciously create for everybody, children included. If you're all, if you're radically quarantining. I know some of that is breaking up now, but there has to be that time. And I think what I told a lot of men is women are getting hammered by this thing, you know, because they're getting, it was bad enough doing a career and then coming home. Now we're talking about the, the career and the parenting being coast simultaneous. And that's, you know, I don't, I don't know how women did it. <laughs> I mean, my hats have gone off to every mother. I think they're the silent heroes of this COVID era. And uh, 
gosh, I, I, you know, if you did anything good at all, you were a hero, Sarah. And it sounds like you did. So you have to navigate that. And I think it's okay to navigate with your children, especially as they get older, you know. Now, if there is conflict, uh, a lot of times people, especially couples, will break into criticism and defensiveness. Mm -hmm. uh, we know from the research that if you start off with a critical or harsh startup, as it's called, that 96% of the time, you will not get a congruent response back. You'll get either defensiveness, you can, might get contempt or counter criticism or stonewalling. So, what's so, but the lifeblood is feedback, not criticism. So, how do you give feedback if you can keep a calm enough brain that you can choose your words? And what I, the feedback loop I always teach every couple is a very simple one that anybody listening can, can do. It's you got to eliminate the criticism, stop making it about their character. And most couples and most people, when they get upset, they make it 90% of what they say is about the past, what they didn't get versus making a request for what they want. The better thing is to give feedback and to give somebody a recipe for success instead of saying, this is all about your character. <clears throat> so what you would say is, you know, honey, you have to give the fly on the wall statement, two or three sentences. This has got to be done in about 10 sentences, two or three sentences in each part. Honey, give the fly on the wall. Honey, what I noticed is the tea bag is on the, on the counter again. Okay. <laughs> you know, not like, oh, there you are, you slop. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Honey, this tea, I want to notice since the tea bag is on the counter again. And the story I tell myself, the story I tell myself is that I, I must be the, the maid of honor, and I have, and I feel like I'm maid and not and not a, a mate, right? Okay. So, and you just say it really short. And what I feel is, I feel a little disempowered, and I feel frustrated and angry, and not seen. And what I would like instead is, can we make sure that the tea bags are put in the trash? And if you need help reminding, what would be a good way? If you get fly on the wall, story I tell me, that's you owning up your experience, you know, how you feel, you know, and you leave off the you own, and then that and what you want in return, that's feedback. That will get away that uh, from the 96% of a bad response back. And I think if we're talking about that, now that will help them stay in green brain, right? <laughs> right. That's, yeah, because criticism, I guarantee you, People's heart rates go up, that you know, and all those other good things, right, are not so good things in this instance. So if we're talking about couples, use more feedback, less criticism, give recipes for success. And you have to sit and make every, every feeling okay, but you also have to negotiate this new situation where there's got to be time for me, you know. Uh, and the we needs to be very supportive. That's why... Uh, if you're a man listening to this, it is feelings first, fix later. Leave, fix. If you're if your beloved is 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 saying I've got to talk about something, ask her, honey, do you want do you want comfort or do you want a solution? Ninety nine percent of the time, what are they going to say, Sarah? <laughs> just, comfort. <laughs> just comfort. Just listen for the feelings. Oh, I must, and you say, oh my God, what else are you feeling? Oh, that must be terrible. What's the worst part of that feeling? Make it about the feelings and you'll fix it. If you try to make a fix it, you'll get other feelings back, but they won't be the green ones. Uh, what what we all need, what calms us is feeling felt. Yeah. Feeling yeah. felt. Gary, I am loving everything you're saying. And I, I want people, because we're out of time, I want to make sure people know where to find your book and where to find you. You're so full of knowledge and such a, an integral part of what people are needing today. So please let us know where to find you and, and where to find your book. Okay. Well, my book is on Amazon, Safe to Love Again. You just go to Amazon. That's by me. And, uh, and if you, you can reach out to me, uh, you can go to my website, GarySalyer.com, Gary Salyer, S-A-L-Y-E-R. Or, or if you have a question, you can just write me and you can go to the website, but it's Dr. Gary, D-R-G-A-R-I, at GarySalyer.com. And um, awesome. those are the ways to reach out and get the book. 
Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I know people got a ton of little nuggets from here and I recommend you go and find him and follow him and read his book. It, it is, I, I just want to say it, it is S-A-L-Y-E-R. I just noticed yes. that. <laughs> yes. And yes. I've seen it misspelled um, a couple different places. So make sure you get it S-A-L. Um, thank you for joining us, everybody. And if I can help you with your health issues, you can contact me directly through the website, Sarah at acceleratedhealthproducts.com, or just comment on below on the show. And I'm happy happy to put together a protocol for you and you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram under Accelerated Health Products YouTube channel and all of the podcast platforms under Accelerated Health Radio and TV. You can find the supplements we talked about and all of my informational videos at acceleratedhealthproducts.com and you can also use coupon W4HC 20 for 20% 20 off site-wide. Thanks again for joining us here on Accelerated Health Radio and TV. Have a great week. Thanks, Gary. Thank you, Sarah.